Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name's Dominic Saparito, and I am or was a chartered accountant for many years. And I'd like to welcome you all to this Career Catalyst event uh, on behalf of Intern Match and Study Melbourne and Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand. And today we're going to have a lunch and learn with some chart with uh, some chartered accountants and representatives um, of uh, Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand, and also a chartered accountant and an international student that's going to provide us um, uh, with their perspective of their journey uh, into Australia and how they wish to become uh, a chartered accountant, just like me. Um, I'm coming to you today actually from my wife's florist. Um, I thought rather than have a boring background, I'd just show you, you know, the uh, the big cool room we have getting ready for Mother's Day. So anyone on the call, don't forget your mums. It's uh, this Sunday, get your orders in early. And uh, if you live in the Keelor area, please drop in and see us. We'd be very, very happy to help you out. So we've got some terrific people with us today. But before we start, I think we're going to go to the next slide, Alan. Oh, that's me. Actually, go back. Sorry. Dom, we're just going to have to pause for a moment as your internet's cut out. But we'll actually get Carvey if you'd like to do the acknowledgement of country, please. Uh, sure, yeah. So I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm presenting from today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. And I extend my respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. Thank you. Thanks, Carvey. Um, I'd like to just quickly get everyone to please introduce yourself, starting with Marissa. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having us, Ellen. Um, it's lovely to be working with Intern Match and Study Melbourne. Um, I am from Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand. I sit in the careers engagement team. Um, Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand is a membership body, the peak um, accounting industry body in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and we in our team work really closely with students and all of your um, lecturers and careers teams on campus to help you understand what your next steps might be in the accounting industry um, and what your pathway might be. So more than happy to have a chat with anyone to understand a little bit more about what it is like to be an accountant here um, and some of the different, um, you know, opportunities that you might come across while you're at university. Lovely. Thank you, Marissa. Um, and to Emily, if you'd like to please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself and your role. Sure. Thank you for having me also. Uh, so my name is Emily and I'm an assistant manager in the corporate tax team at BDO. I started my career back at EY um, in 2018 where I started as a grad um, and I was in the financial services tax team there until mid-2021 um, and then I've come across to BDO. Um, I completed EY's in-house tax module um, as part of or which was um, recognised for CA purposes um, and then I completed the rest of my CA during COVID. Uh, so that was a new and an interesting experience. Um, so yes, I've now obtained my CA qualification. Terrific. And uh, hopefully I'm back now. And apologies that my internet cut out. It was working beautifully earlier. Um, did we do the acknowledgement to country, Melissa? Mar Marissa? Yeah, we did. Terrific. Sorry about that. Um, so I'll just quickly introduce um, myself, Dominic Saparito, um, founder of uh, Intern Match, former chartered accountant. I was at KPMG for a couple of years and then spent almost a decade at Pitcher Partners, one of the original Pitcher Partners um, people when we formed uh, the business back in the very early 90s, when the world was not as good as it is today, very high interest rates, high unemployment. Um, I remember that my mortgage at the time was 17%. So when I hear these young people saying that they're, that their home loans are five and 6%, I kind of have a bit of a giggle because uh, I was having to deal with 17%. So how the world was changed. So um, so we've heard from Emily. Um, Carvey, have we heard from you? Have you introduced yourself? Uh, not yet, but yeah, I can do it now. Wonderful. Yeah. Fire away. 
Yeah, thanks. So I think, again, thanks uh, everyone for having me here today. So my name is Kavi and I hail from a tiny island called Mauritius. And I'm currently in my final semester at Melbourne Uni pursuing a Bachelor of Commerce, majoring in accounting and finance. Outside of uni, I'm pursuing a cadetship at uh, HLB Manjad, uh, which is a mid-tier accounting and advisory practice in the audit and assurance uh, service line. And I'm also a CA student representative. And I think I'm very excited to be here today to share my experience as an international student, as well as being an accounting student uh, with all of you and happy to take on any questions at the end. Thank you. Terrific, and Marissa, have you introduced yourself? Wonderful, thanks. All right, we're back on track. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to start um, with uh, with Emily, who's our uh, resident chartered accountant here. And Emily, I'd love to hear about um, your story and your transition from uni into um, chartered accounting, where you are at the moment at PDO. Sure. Uh, so I, I don't think I mentioned this before, but I studied a Bachelor of Commerce and Laws at uni. Um, so I had to decide essentially whether I'd go down the, the commerce or law path. And I decided that I really enjoyed the accounting aspect um, of school and uni. So I thought I'd jump into that. Um, I landed a grad role at EY. Um, so I put my application in and went through that process. Um, and so then I was, yeah, within the financial services tax team for a few years. And then I decided that um, the big four, I think I was ready to jump into something a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm now at BDO, which is a mid-tier firm. And in terms of size, um, it is it is a great deal, deal, deal smaller than EY was. Um, and I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm very content with um, BDO and how it's all going. But I think EY gave me a really good grounding. Um, and technically, I learned, yeah, a great deal. And I think that was obviously assisted as well by completing my CA. And I think I think um, something that came out of CA for me was just actually having an awareness of all the other service lines, so of audit, um, of business services, um, and also an under you actually come out with a better understanding of how things work at a, from a client's perspective. So I think CA gives you a really good um like overview, which actually helps you in your day-to-day -day work, even though you might not think it's directly impacting. Yeah. And for those of um for those who aren't aware, um, there's what we call the big four. And when I first started my career, it was the big eight, then it became the big six, and now it's the big four. And yeah. they're very different to the second tier firms. Um, Emily, can yeah. you tell us what, what is that difference essentially? Well, I think BDO is still, it has a lot of ex big four um, accountants and, uh, yeah, a lot of the partners have come from big fours. Um, I think it's just a smaller community and um, for me it's, I, I think it's, a, a, I'm finding it better in terms of relationships. I've got good relationships with everyone um, in the firm and that's that's just a personal preference. Like I, I really like to know people on a personal level and what they do on the weekend and, you know, things about their family and that kind of thing. So I, I think that's probably the, the greatest difference for me. I think you still do get a lot of the benefits, like there's a social club um, and, yeah, there's there's other things that you do as a team outside of work as well to, you know, network and um, get to know each other. So you do get those benefits still. Um, and, and what about and what about from a client perspective? What Are um, the clients very different? Yeah, so... At, at a big four, it's really, it really is the top end of town. You're dealing with um, essentially multinationals, or I was most of the time. Um, whereas, as when I jumped over to BDO, um, I'm dealing a lot more. We do have multinationals, but we have a much broader range of clientele. So we have entrepreneurs through to yeah, privately small privately owned um, businesses, family businesses, and then. Um, you have those businesses that are looking to list on the ASX. So we do a lot of um, work with them to help them prepare for that. Uh, and then, yeah, we've got um, clients that are large and they're looking to do acquisitions and that kind of thing. Um, or, yeah, so there's a lot of, like, inorganic expansion that goes on there. Um, yeah, so it's it's a much broader range, I would say, um, of work that I do now compared to Wonderful. EY. And and, and I, I dare say that um, uh, uh, HLB Man Judd, um, BDO, where I was at Picture Partners too, 
um, I found that um, a great difference was that you get to deal with privately owned businesses and therefore you do tend to work with the owners of businesses. And yeah. I found myself that uh, many of these owners have become my mentors. Did you connect with many of the uh, many of the uh, the business owners in the work that you do? Definitely. I think that was also something that I noticed. Thanks for triggering that um, discussion. Yeah, I, I think so. For example, at EY, I was on an audit for a major bank. Um, we were doing the tax component of that. Um, and it is great. You do get to know their management and that kind of thing. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, they, they don't have that emotional and financial investment in that business. Um, so, yeah, I since coming over to BDO, yeah, I have gotten to meet a lot of the people who are running the show um, and it's their baby and they have a lot more, I suppose, at stake than um, the clients that I used to deal with. So, yeah, I think there's a lot more um, engagement that goes on there. Um, I feel like, yeah, it's it's easier to kind of strike up that connection um, and, yeah, I think they've just got, yeah, because they've got a lot more invested, um, yeah, I, I enjoy helping them because you actually can, you know, see the person that you're helping and see their response when they're grateful for what you do. Yeah, and, and you mentioned before um, they have a lot more emotion. Um, mm. I've certainly seen over my journey plenty of emotion from owners of businesses, especially when uh, when times are a little tough or they're a yeah. little bit under stress. And, and also to a fair few egos uh, that, that are running some of the businesses. So I really enjoyed actually doing that. So, so Car thank you for that, Emily. Carby, okay. um, I'd love to hear from you um, about the type of work that you did during your internship um, and just some of the things that, that you picked up. Um, yeah, for sure. So I would first sort of echo what... Um, I mean, he has said earlier in terms of like, I've worked at both big fours uh, in my previous internships and also in the mid-tier space. And I think I also personally value that human aspect of things, especially with the team I work in. And as you probably would know in audit and assurance, it's all about working in teams, building good relationships with your team members, whether your managers, seniors, et cetera. So I really like the close-knit culture of HLB in that, on that end because I sort of felt lost in a big four and I felt the sort of a divisions were a bit siloed, like I guess tax like audit was separate on separate floors as well. But the difference at HLB is that everything is on one floor and people sort of interact with one another from different teams. So I think in terms of the work we do, so of course I do mostly, uh, I guess, cadet level or grad level work. So sort of understanding the client systems around their payroll or expenses, doing process meetings, walkthroughs, sort of technical terms I know, but essentially like building an understanding of how your client pays its its employees, do we pay them the correct amount, for instance, at a very basic level and doing a few testing around there. And I think audit is wasn't some something I initially wanted to do, but sort of when I ventured into it, I sort of found that it really builds and helps you build an intimate understanding of businesses, of clients. So I think as a grad, I would highly encourage people if you're not thinking about other service lines, please try to think or do an internship around audit because you might like it because then it, it sort of helps you have a lot of exit opportunities as well, whether tax, business advisory, or even finance, I think. So yeah, in terms of the work I do, I think it has helped me really build that understanding, which is sort of still, still being built over time right now. But yeah, very happy with the work and how it's, how it's going. Terrific. And and obviously you report into someone of, of seniority like um, Emily, but can you tell us a little bit about the expectation that the firm had um, when you joined them on day one? Because there's a lot of a lot of young people I speak to just think, oh my goodness, I, I'm not sure I could handle it. But but how much do they expect you to know on your very first day? To be very, very honest, I don't think that, yeah, I would say zero, but like mostly in terms of like very basic, I guess knowledge about how to speak with people and stuff but not not very specific or technical accounting sort of knowledge because I think every firm sort of builds upon that with you so for instance if I were to sort of take you through my first week at HLB uh, the, but whole week was spent on internal and external training so we have like a sort of a trainer come in explain the basics of accounting from scratch 
to us with debits and credits, how systems work and stuff. So that sort of helped. Uh, I also got the opportunity to sort of go on a trip to that client. So the, the assessor, so the trainer had like uh, his part of a golf club in Leon Gaffa. So we got to do a field trip as part of our training as well. So we stayed there in golf and learned about inventory, um, accounting systems and stuff. So like the risks attached to, I guess, a golf club. So yeah, it, it was fun, but I would say for, for grads, you're not expected to really know much. Of course, you need to know how to speak well, communicate well, present your things, ask questions, but that's the most important thing, I, I think, at, at the very start. But the firm would sort of teach you or like you would learn on the job. And, and if you have any questions, I think everyone would sort of be very open to answering those. Wonderful. And um. And those that know me know that my daughter just started her internship. Um, she's at RMIT and she started at Grand Thornton in the audit division. And she's probably in week number six now and really, really enjoying it. She didn't really um, know what to expect. And of course, I gave her a few hints on uh, on what the risks are in different areas and so forth, but she didn't need to know any of that. And she's really enjoying it um, and having a great time. Thank you for that. Um, Marissa, I'd like to ask you, um, Many um, people out there who are considering a career in accounting really don't know the difference between um, chartered accounting and other forms of accounting. Uh, could you perhaps from uh, the Institute's point of view take us through the difference? You're on mute. Interesting. Um... So from our perspective um, and for students that uh, may be new to the country or just haven't gotten to the point of really understanding what a further qualification in accounting could look like, um, generally after you graduate and you go to a firm like HLB or BDO, um, they'll generally, especially in the largest uh, side of things have an affiliation with a certain type of designation. Um, in Australia, the top 100 companies and many others do um, associate as chartered accounting firms. And that means that what they do is once you've started in your graduate program, normally they take you know, six to 12 months, let you settle in, get accustomed to full-time work and and what the culture of the business is. And then they'll get you to start um, doing what we call the CA program. So that's our chartered accounting program through which you can become a chartered accountant. Um, this is generally because if you think about it, when you're studying, you know, a Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Business and majoring in accounting, um, you just get a very surface level of these different uh, business lines. As Emily said before, when you do the CA program, you really understand the breadth of different options in accounting and how they interact with each other. Um, and so to be, you know, working uh, as a grad or as you go on and, and as an intermediate accountant in audit, for example, you do need a lot more knowledge than the one third year subject that you've done at university. Um, so it does give you a lot of um, extra knowledge and really dives a lot deeper into these different topics. Um, our CA program is three years um, minimum. So you do some uh, subjects, there's nine subjects, and you also have to be working in an accounting role at the same time. Um, and part of this as well is this culture of lifelong learning that you need to continuously be up to date with any relevant policies and legislation. And that continues um, through your professional development after you become a chartered accountant as well. Um, but by doing the CA program, you're actually doing a postgraduate diploma of chartered accounting. Um, so you're getting an internationally recognized postgraduate degree with it. It's not just a piece of paper. It's it's uh, tertiary approved. Um, and as I said, it, it sort of makes you have this opportunity where you can go anywhere you want. So um, chartered accountants is part of what's called the Global Accounting Alliance as well, which means that if you're interested in going overseas, doing a secondment, um, or just going traveling and working somewhere else, by being a CA, you actually are able to go and practice accounting overseas as well. So it's a really great uh, great way that you can sort of unlock different opportunities and and go explore. And and Marissa, how much better are we than CPAs? <laughs> well, that's a loaded question, Tom. Um, I guess <laughs> some of the differences between um, CPA and, and CA is that in our program, as I said, we're a graduate diploma of chartered accounting. Um, we're also the only Australian membership body part of the Global Accounting Alliance, so that reciprocal membership. Um, 
other than that, I think it's about the opportunities that you want to go into. So um, within firms that are chartered accounting, a certain percentage of their partnership needs to be um, they need to be filled with chartered accountants. So to an extent at, you know, HLB and BDO, there's uh, a limited opportunity in which you can progress within the firm if you do not hold a CA designation. Um, so it's really important to remember that when you're choosing what qualification you want to do. Everyone has different ambitions and different plans for their future. Um, but other than that, you know, the programs are fairly similar in terms of they're both three years. Um, but one of the main differences in terms of the content as well is that um, as, you know, Emily probably knows, generally people that do tax really hate audit and vice versa. Um, and in our program, you have to do both of them as core subjects. Um, and one of the reasons we think that that's really important as opposed to other um qualifications where you can choose to do one or the other is that we want you to understand how they're all interacting with each other. We want you to go on and have really fulfilled careers where you can go on and be partners and directors. And within that situation, you're not only needing to understand how your individual business unit is working. Um, so it's really important that we're creating people that are going to be leaders in accounting. Terrific. That was a very diplomatic answer. I'm, I'm, <laughs> going, to, I'm going to provide a different answer. And it's 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 not really that controversial. What I've found, and Emily, you might want to comment after I uh, after I give my explanation of the difference, is that generally speaking, I find that um, chartered accountants tend to work in firms, and they get to work on multiple clients in multiple industries for multiple partners and multiple owners, and their breadth of experience is across many many businesses and many many industries. Whereas the CPAs, generally speaking, they tend to specialise in a particular industry and they're normally in industry. They might be in the transport industry or the airline industry. And so they go very, very deep in that industry and become a little bit of an expert. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but I must admit, because I am an entrepreneur and I've started 20 businesses in my life, 10 were terrible, so I had to shut them down, but six were pretty good. I sold them and I'm working on four at the moment, um, uh, which are going quite well. I actually really appreciate the breadth of um, uh, variation in the experience of having to deal with so many different businesses, because I think that's really defined who I am and, and uh, has provided me with the ability to start many, many different businesses in different industries. Emily, would you like to comment a bit on that? Agree or disagree? Yeah, I 100% agree with what you just said. Um, I think being in a professional services firm too, yeah, you, you're building relationships with all these different teams as well because you need you, can't, you need to know where your boundaries lie. Um, but at the same time, that's why clients come to you because they know that you're the one-stop shop and you know the right people. So um, it's, it's great to have that network. Then if you do choose to go out and start a business, you have all those contacts as well and people that can help you along the way. Um, and I think, yeah, as I said before, um, it, it, oh, there's so much um, cross-service line interaction. Um, it gives you a really holistic um, view of how a business operates um, and the requirements of a business. And I think, yeah, if you were choosing to ultimately go down you know, the path of starting your own business, I think that would give you a really, really good grounding um, because, yeah, they're, realistically in a business, it's not just tax. It's not just audit. Um yeah, you, you have to have an awareness of all of the different um, types of accounting um, that you may encounter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. To totally, totally agree. And and so while we're on this topic, Emily, um, and again, um, those that were looking to join uh, a chartered accounting firm yeah. probably don't realise just how many different variations of specialisations there are within a firm. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. take me through some of the specialisations at BDO? Sure. So um, at BDO, we have a business services team. Um, so they do, I suppose, they, they provide a whole lot of different services to a business. It's quite generalised, I suppose. Um, but then we also have, and they, they prepare financial statements for businesses. Um, they um, deal with the ATO on various matters. Um, and, yeah, service, service clients, um, I suppose, across a whole lot of different areas of their business. Um, then we have tax, and under tax comes corporate tax. Um, there's also indirect tax. So they're the taxes like GST, fringe benefits tax, um, 
Oh, yeah, sorry, indirect tax is more GST and like VAT, which is um, applicable to uh, foreign jurisdictions. Yeah, then we've got employee, um, oh, employment taxes rather. Um, and that's, yeah, that's where fringe benefits tax sort of falls under, um, payroll tax, all that sort of thing. We've got transfer pricing, which is uh, maybe not familiar to too many of you, but transfer pricing is um, essentially a service line that looks at um, transactions between um, international related parties um, and just to make sure that they're correctly priced and being taxed to the right jurisdictions. Um, so there's that. And then there's the audit team, um, which is massive, um, probably the biggest team that we have at BDO. Um, then we've got um, shared services teams as well, advisory teams. So they can advise clients on a whole range of issues within their business. Um, and, and so... And, and do you have an insolvency division as well? We do. We do have um, people that, yeah, work in insolvency and, um, yes. yeah. I've spent a little bit of time um, in insolvency and I must uh, admit it was probably one of my favourite areas. There's, it's less um, it's less technical from an accounting point of view, but it really does draw upon your commercial skills, which I really, really loved. Um, yeah, we've got restructuring, um, which, yeah, restructuring. It, it looks at, yeah, it looks at um, like how you can turn a business around as well um, if, yeah. Yeah, if you are in, I suppose, dire straits as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. But... Um, but the way to get into all those areas of specialisation, though, is predominantly through the audit division. Would, would that be the case? I mean, I started off in tax. Um, having had okay. a few years' experience now, I would say that audit would be a fantastic place to start because yep. it would give you a segue into all the different um, service lines after that. And I think once you're in a firm, it's quite easy to then switch between teams should you choose yes. So, so I think it's it's a matter of getting in the door, and then um, once you're in, you're not as yeah, you're not pigeonholed into that one team forever. Um, there's definitely opportunities. These firms would rather, you know, they've trained you up and given you all this learning and development, and I think they'd rather keep you um, if you're not happy in the team that you're in, lose you to another team within that firm, um, than lose you altogether. So, so there's definitely yeah. opportunity for movement, um, and and also I. I Something I haven't mentioned is um, you can do secondments to clients. Um, so recently I was um, doing an in-house tax manager role for a client while their tax manager was on mat leave. So that actually gave me the in-house industry experience whilst actually working for a professional services firm. So, yeah, it's a bit of the best of both worlds. And if you put your, yeah, if you put your hand up and expressed interest in doing that, that's something I'm sure um, that you could be offered. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's interesting. And that's interesting, Emily, because um, I know that certainly when I was a picture partner, I would get multiple offers from um, clients to go and join them. And I'd get, yeah. I'd get two or three a year. Given that you did that outsourcing role, did you come yeah. away from that thinking that you would rather be in industry or remain in the profession? I think before I took that on, I thought that I would actually go out into industry ultimately. Um, having had the experience it was great and I think it's now given me a view of the other side of the fence which then informs a lot of what I do um, and I, I suppose you understand the challenges that clients have with pulling all their information together. Um, but in saying that, I think personally I'm still at that level where I have so much to learn um, and I feel like if I'm working for a whole lot of different clients um, of various sizes and in different industries, at that point that would serve me um, better than being in industry working for one particular client um, as I just feel like, yeah, there's there's a lot more exposure to a broad range of issues in in the, in the role that I'm in currently. Yeah. And and uh, I'm sure um, Marissa would attest to this and Emily too that um, uh, the industry and, and the chartered accounting firms um, put an, an incredible amount of effort and expense and time into training uh, if okay. it really is if you really do want continuous learning and really want to be a professional uh, in accounting there's no better place than going to a chartered accounting firm because the money they spend and the effort that they put into training you and Emily it's probably why you don't want to go because you know that if you do go to um, you know anyone in the industry that kind of stops and then it's up to you to keep yourself up to date 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think ultimately for me, I'd probably either stay at BDO and go for partner or now I'd go out and try and start my own business like you have many, many times. Um, yep. Yeah, but I think I still need a bit more um, grounding and education yep. before I go out and take that leap of faith. So, yeah, uh, but you're right. You get so many, um, that, and yeah, the learning and development is just spoon fed to you at these at these places. And there's grad camps, and they they do um, conferences. So I was in New Zealand at a conference at the start of this year. Um, right. So they really do invest everything into you. Yeah. Oh, and 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 sorry, that's the other thing we may not have mentioned um, is that there is also an opportunity to do some comments overseas, isn't there? In um, yeah. you know, and and perhaps you didn't want to hear why. I'm I'm not sure. Um, an opportunity at BDO. I haven't. I didn't do one at EY. I think yeah. I I did a couple of years at EY, and then we ran into the C word, um, COVID. Um, okay. And then, <laughs> uh, and then coming over to BDO, I haven't actually looked into it. However, there's a couple of people that have just moved over to London um, in business services. So that's definitely um, got Wonderful. me thinking. Yeah. yeah, good. And and um, and what Emily said before too, and that is that once you're in a chartered accounting firm and you're doing um, you're doing a good job, and, and most people do because um, once, once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult, um, but it's extremely rewarding. But one of my businesses that I had was a recruitment agency. And for 13 years, I did recruitment of just accountants in the accounting industry. And many of my friends who are partners in chartered accounting firms all across Melbourne would send me um, their clients to help them out. And one thing I can say, hand on heart, is the chartered accountants, again, generally get paid more than any other type of accountant. So hence, having said that, let's talk about how to get a job in a chartered accounting firm. And, and I'd love to start um, with you, Carvey, because um, we haven't heard from you for a little while. And that is, Carvey, how did you go about getting your internship um, at the chartered accounting firm uh, where you're at? Um, yeah, great question, Dom. So I sort of, yeah, so just to take you back at that point in time, I did sort of half of my degree online because of uh, border closures. So couldn't fly here for till the end of 2021. So sort of my plans got pushed back a little bit, but I would sort of, I guess, advise, but students as well as in terms of what I did was you have to plan ahead. So in your first year, it's sort of, I guess, the place where you dip your toes in the water and try to test everything, student clubs, um, how your courses are, etc. But by the start of your second year is really the, I guess, grind time where you have to sort of sort of like shortlist potential internships, cadetships, etc. So what I did was I joined uh, a few student clubs uh, in the accounting space. So one of them was Bida Avasai, which is an accounting honors society from America, but sort of have, have international chapters all around the globe. Uh, and a few other clubs as well. And those clubs really helped me, uh, I guess, um, have networks around me. So for instance, go to networking evenings, connect with people, socialize with people, because I think that's one of the great things in, in sort of a commerce industry that you get to meet lots of great people, even from like being a student or from a junior position. So you get to go and ask questions. So definitely go to these evenings, ask lots of questions. What, what do you actually do in your job? How do I apply for things? And none of those questions are actually dumb because you're a student. So you won't really know what they do because I didn't know anything about, I don't know, tax or audit. So I asked a million of questions, I swear. So that was one of the things I did first. And then uh, I also joined a CA as a student rep. So I think from there, my journey sort of took off in the sense that when I came here, I joined as a student rep and I got a few, I guess, um, opportunities to network with people because CA obviously does a lot of various networking events in the accounting space. And of course, being a CA student rep or a student affiliate as well, if you haven't signed up, you sort of get the opportunity to have access or premium access to those events or invites firsthand. So defer go to this, I definitely went to those events. And then I applied to the CA Achiever program. So essentially, I got my internship through CA again, because they have a specific sort of internship uh, sort of line, just like other big fours or even mid-tier firms have their uh, internship or VACI or vacation positions, uh, sort of CA has its own uh, sort of program, C Achiever. But the difference in this program was that with a single application, you can apply to like 
I don't know, 20 or 30 firms, Maurice, I can confirm, for each state or even between different states at one go. So I applied, did that whole interview process, psychometric, psychometric testing, et cetera. And then I finally got matched to HLB Mindshot. And of course, did the part interview and luckily got in. So I would say, yeah, definitely plan ahead, buy your second year, join student clubs, apply for as many positions. Of course, as a student, you would face re- you will face rejections, but I think rejection is just redirection towards something better and also to know how to, I guess, uh, present your resume in a better way. And there are so many workshops as well, I would say, whether from CA or from university. So I attended those as well. There were my CV, I think, got reviewed maybe around 10 times before I actually got my first internship. So there's always room for improvement and review. Yeah, so again, rejection is is redirection, apply as many things as you can, and you might eventually lend into something. Okay, and and that thank you so much for that. Um, But I just need to correct you on one thing, Kavi. You said that you might get lucky. There's no, there was no luck in it for you. You did all the right things to make yourself known to the chartered accounting firms that this is what you wanted to do. You went to events, you spoke with people. I dare say you probably connected with heaps of people on LinkedIn. You, you, and, and so, and so when someone like Emily interviews someone like you, you know, the words of the industry, you know, how to conduct yourself, you know, how to speak with people. And so therefore um, I encourage, you know, every single person looking to get um, any job really, but certainly into the profession such as uh, chartered accounting, you go to these events and, and really it's your job at least once a week, which will meet people connect with them you can absolute beeline for her push everybody else out of the way and have a chat with her and make her know that you want a job in tax doing thin capitalization at uh at uh, at bdo uh, because you've got to be memorable and and you know emily will go back and say hey i met this terrific young man uh, named carvey he's really keen um, would love you know would love a, a role in our profession you should really consider him um, HR people so there was no luck in it at all I don't know what you think Emily oh absolutely agree I think the more you put yourself out there as well um, the more confidence you'll get as well um, and and I think too it's just as much about the firm um, promoting themselves as you try to put your best foot forward it's got to be a two-way street I guess and um, you you want to know that you're going to you know fit in culturally where where you're um, applying and um, that you know you're you're going to get along with the the people there and so yeah so I suppose you've got to treat it just as much about you know the, uh, as an opportunity for them to sell it to you um, uh, and but in saying in saying that um, yeah I think you just put yourself out there as much as you can apply as Carby said, um, as many times as you can because, you know, often you will get feedback from those firms as well. So they'll come back and they'll say, thank you for applying. We're not offering you a position at this point because of X, Y, Z. So I think that's all really great feedback um, that you can then use to uh, your advantage the next time you apply somewhere. Um, so, yeah, but nothing, I think, yeah, rejection can, um, yeah, will ultimately lead you in the right direction, as Carby, yep. Carby said, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and Marissa, it, it's interesting. And I only just recently learned about um, the program that uh, the Chartered Accountants um, has to assist people in getting internships with chartered accounting firms. Would you like to tell everyone a little bit about that? Because, gee, I wish I had that when I was, uh, when I was going through. It was, it was hard yakka trying to get a, um, a job yeah. with, you know, the, likes of the, the big eight back then. Tell us about yeah, that. definitely. It's it's funny that you say that, Dom, because even now, I mean, in my role, we speak to lots of graduate recruiters as well to try and help them with filling their intakes. And I, I've definitely come across a couple that said, oh, I did the Achiever program back in 2001. Um, so we have, of course, changed the program a little bit since then, but it's it does have a really rich history. But maybe, Ellen, if you could go to the next two slides, I think we have... Um, uh, yes, exactly. So like Carvey was talking about, we have something called the Achiever Program, which essentially, as I was 
saying earlier, there are certain firms that we call um, chartered accounting affiliated. So that means like they take you through the CA program um, once you've graduated. Um, so essentially we reach out to these employers and we ask them if they would like to take any um, interns on. Uh, so this program is only for students. It's not once you have graduated, you need to be currently studying. So you can see some of those eligibility criteria on the screen. This is um, for our winter intake. So we run two intakes a year, one in winter and one over summer. We're currently closed for the winter intake because that's obviously happening very soon. Um, but applications will open again for summer in, at the end of July. But essentially, uh, you need to be studying an accounting degree and you need to be um, in your penultimate, which is your second last or your final year of study. Um, and essentially, if you're meeting all that criteria, we take you through um, some psychometric testing and some video interviews. And if you make it into that final pool, what we do is we match you based on your interests. So when you apply and when the employer registers for this program, they put down what they're interested in. So, you know, Emily's team at BDO might have said that they they can support two interns. So BDO might come to us and say, yep, we're really happy to have um, two uh tax interns, maybe their audit team wants one. Um, they'll tell us how many weeks that they're interested to come for, um, if they're open to part-time. Um, and based on that and any of the other more um, characteristics to that placement that they let us know, we match you according to your preference as well. Obviously, we won't match you with someone, um, let's say in Queensland, if that's not what you're interested in, but we do run this program across Australia and New Zealand. So we recommend uh, having a placement time of between three to 12 weeks. Uh, we do find that this program is really, really popular for um, the smaller practices. So I know today we've spoken a lot about sort of that mid-tier space and big four, but within the accounting industry, obviously you can work in commerce, in corporate areas, like at banks um, or, you know, places like Coles and, and other corporates, but you can also work in government, you could work in non-for-profits. And then of course we have our smaller practices. Um, so we find that it's really popular with um, our mid-tiers and our small practices and government specifically uh, because they don't necessarily always have um, in the small practice space a recruiting person who can spend hours and hours of time um, filtering through uh, applications. So they often supplement this and they'll maybe only take on two or three people a year and they do that through us because we run the whole process through them. So like Harvey said, it's a one application for many and we match you based on who we think would be a, a great fit for you. Absolutely brilliant. And again, gee, I wish I, I wish I had this when I was going through it. Um, uh, a question: um, When do firms tend to do the, the bulk of their recruiting, so, uh, especially at the intern and grad level? Yeah, it's it's a great question. It's actually changed a lot over the past couple of years. So traditionally in Australia, we see that, um, or we used to see that uh, the main recruitment time was sort of the end of February through till about Easter time, so early April, um, when uh, most places with graduate programs would take uh, applications and then you would generally hear back and get um, some interviews later um, in the month and then maybe have offers at around May time. So people are sending that out now if they haven't already. Um, but because of COVID and, and, you know, a lot of international students not being onshore um, and students just generally not on campus and understanding that this is the normal life cycle, uh, we have found that firms are having a second intake as well. So opening up like, I, like we are in August and sort of September time. Um, but we're also seeing some firms having rolling applications. So that means that they're open all year round. Um, I know some of the big four are testing this out. Um, and that's because we just, it's a really competitive environment for a lot of um, employers at the moment. So for any of these students listening, definitely it's a good time to be looking for jobs. Um, a lot of people are looking for accountants and to create a pipeline of accountants coming through to fill an intermediate level need as well. Um, so definitely be looking on different platforms like Grad Connection. Um, I know we have a jobs board as well. Um, look at your career boards um, at unis as well because everyone posts there and it's definitely great to be in contact with your careers team as well. 
Ter terrific. And and I would like to encourage um, everyone too that uh, if you're at a university that does allow you to um, swap out one of your electives to do a placement in a business, um, please take advantage of that if you possibly can, uh, because I think you'll get a lot more value out of doing uh, a work placement in a business under an accountant um, rather than doing another elective. And this is especially true for the internationals. So the internationals that are listening to us today, although this is important for the, for the locals also, but your internationals, if your university does allow you to do a work placement, please take advantage of that because it gets your foot in the door. And I can tell you hand on heart, no one cares if you're an international or a local person. If you've got the skills, and we know that this is a pathway to permanent residency, uh, if you've got the skills, they will employ you. So don't think that you'll be at a disadvantage. Actually, Carl, um, Dom, your internet isn't very good. I might just Someone's jump on. Oh, I might just jump on and add as well. Um, I know something that, you know, Kavi was mentioning before that he went to all of these events. Um, I think a lot of the time when I speak to students, because we're often like a very impartial sort of neutral party because we're not hiring graduates ourselves, students will come to us and sort of let us know that they're very intimidated to go and speak to the representatives from firms that are there. And I think it's just important to understand that you have to put yourself out there. Really, nothing's going to come if you just stay in the corner. People want to speak to you they're more than happy like Dom said before to go back and let their hiring manager know that there was a really great student sometimes your applications might even get fast-tracked from that process um, but I think something that's a really easy way to sort of stand out to these um, representatives that come to different events as well is very often when you're seeing a promotional post to say come to this event you can see the logos of the firms that are participating so it really takes 10 minutes to jump online before that event and research who's going to be there I know I've been in a position many times before when um, students will come up to me and ask a very scripted question like hi, my name is X, um, what opportunities do you have for me? And while that's better than not having a conversation with me at all, it shows, especially because we're not hiring graduates, it shows that you haven't done much research about who I am. Um, and so even as simple as jumping on the BDO website and understanding what different service lines they have is a nicer way to start a conversation with Emily when you do see her in person. So that little bit of effort really does go a long way. Yeah, and, and again, apologies to my internet. Every time someone rings me, my um, my phone goes a bit funny, so apologies for that. The, the other thing too, and and forgive me if you mention this, Marissa, but I'd really like Paris Nationals um, to also look at re areas. Um, we have some very big cities, um, you know, just across Australia, but in Victoria, Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong, and these places, um, uh, if you are looking to um, get your permanent residency here, um, you do get extra points with that. And the firms in those places are desperate and crying out to get terrific young talent into their firms. And it's a great place to live. Um, so check them out because, um, you know, you might find that if you do miss out on some of the, the firms uh, in Melbourne, Sydney and, and around uh, the larger cities, uh, that the regional areas would welcome you with open arms uh, once they know that you really want to be a chartered accountant and, and a real profession uh, in your industry. So there was a couple of questions that did come through um, and, and a couple of people have asked about how to make yourself um, more employable. And I just wanted to reiterate that um, is that you've got to get yourself out there. Um, both Kavi, uh, Emily, Marissa have all said that. You've got to get out there. Go to networking events, meet people, connect with them. Um, LinkedIn is, is more important than ever. In fact, to me, it's more important than your, uh, than your CV. Why? Because your CV is on your hard drive. Your LinkedIn profile is out there 24-7. Kavi, I see you nodding. Get, tell us about LinkedIn and how important it is for you. 
Um, I would say, yeah, I would perfectly echo what you said. Uh, no one would really care about your CV or resume unless you apply for a job. But sort of LinkedIn is your personal brand. Like it's out there. It's how you connect with people every day. When you go to his networking evenings or events, I think one of the main things they ask like for a review is like whether you have a LinkedIn. So we want to get connected. So I think that's a way sort of to build those rela relationships and maintain those relationships because it's very easy to go to an event, but the person would forget, forget about you. But maybe if you have, I guess, any burning questions afterwards, it's really good to keep in touch with that person. And I'm pretty sure everyone's nice enough to like sort of take the time when they are sort of free and answer your questions. So I've, I've done that a few times when I've been to networking events and I've asked questions about the recruitment process, also asking about their day, like in their job. So yeah, LinkedIn is super important in that end and build, yeah, it helps build your network, connect with friends as well. I would say, cause I've met a lot of my friends through LinkedIn. So sort of stay in touch at a grad position. So I would say, yeah, professional network as well as friends. It's it's important on both ends. And also it helps get your experience across because people might just jump on you. There are many recruiters out there. I get approached by recruiters a few times as well in terms of like matching your skills, your experience, so especially as a student, when you already possess those internships, those experience, those skills, you are sort of like I guess perceived or look sort of sort of sought after by various recruiters so it might be a way or like a, a channel through which you could get your potential job and if I'm not mistaken there are sort of applications which you can do on LinkedIn as well so I think LinkedIn apply or sort of easy apply pathways so that's a potential way for you to apply for positions and see when positions are advertised so yeah it, it helps you in, I guess in a myriad of ways if you really want to use it it's a, it's a very good tool. Terrific and, uh, and and very well said. But Carvey, one thing that I get from you um, is that you have must have spent a significant amount of time and effort um, uh, learning how to speak. I mean, just today, just the way that you speak for such a young person um, and present yourself, who wouldn't want to hire you? And, and for all of you out there, you need to put that effort in and you need to go to events, learn to speaking to, in particular, people who are a little bit older than you. You know, old people like me, um, you know, most times we go to events, no one will talk to us. So make a beeline for the older people in the room and just go up to them and say, hey, what brings you here today? Tell me about yourself. And, and you'll get to practice because every conversation that you have is an interview. Trust me. I know um, if she she's at an event and someone comes up to her and they have a, a, a chat about thin capitalization, I know that BDO is always hiring um, good talent. Would that be fair to say, Emily? Absolutely. So, <laughs> so, and, to the relevant sections. No, <laughs> and, uh, and, and even someone like Carby, who has only got a little bit of experience, firms would be falling over themselves um, to, to get a hold of him because he's gone through an internship and someone else has worn that learning curve. So put yourself out there um, and, and, you know, a career in chartered accounting, as you can see from the people that have presented today, is a wonderful career. And from my perspective, really did set me up to start lots of businesses um, and, and, you know, and really make um, a, a fist of it. That's about all we have time for today. Um, and thank you so much to uh, to Marissa and Carby and Emily for participating. Um, Alan, um, we might go through um, just a couple of other slides and, and what's happening um, with uh, Career Catalyst. Are you able to do that or do you want me to do that? Um, so here's an event that's happening tomorrow night. Um, so Wednesday, the 10th of May, and that will be held at Intern Match Office um, and a way to connect um, and hear from the team here at Intern Match. We'll be talking about AI trends, um, personal branding, um, and hearing that from other international students on how to get outside your comfort zone um, and how that can help your career. So that's happening tomorrow night. Um, and if there's any final questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, a huge thank you from the Intern Match team and the Career Catalyst program to our amazing speakers for today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, and to all, um, you know, a, a, a huge thank you to um, Study Melbourne, um, especially if you're an international. Study Melbourne is there to help and look after you. 
All their services are free. Uh, you can get some advice um, regarding legal issues if you are having any, and also to some help if you or a friend is just struggling just to cope. We know that for internationals um, uh, in particular, because your family's back home, you know, sometimes it is very difficult. So please look out for yourself, look out for your friends. And uh, and if you do find some that is struggling a little bit, please um, uh, ask them to get in touch with the wonderful people at Study Melbourne because they will be able to help. So thanks everyone. Um, uh, thanks to, uh, to Alan and Marissa and to Carvey and to Emily. Um, it's been a wonderful discussion today um, and, you know, we hope to see you all again at another event. Thanks, Darwin. Thanks, Ellen. No worries. Thanks, Thanks very much. Everybody. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your day. Thanks. You Bye. Too.